Good afternoon my dear students and welcome. Today I will take you through a plant tissue culture laboratory. Before we start it is important to understand what is plant tissue culture. Tissue culture involves the use of small pieces of plant tissue called explants which are cultured in a nutrient medium under sterile conditions. Using the appropriate growing conditions for each explant type, plants can be induced to rapidly produce new plantlets. A typical plant tissue culture laboratory consists of three main parts, a media preparation room, a transfer room, and a culture room. In addition, a separate washing room is required. A media preparation room typically consists of a clean laboratory space where the culture media are prepared and sterilized. The room thus contains a working bench, weighing balance, refrigerator, necessary glass, and plastic wares, micro pipettes, and the required media components among others. A typical nutrient medium for plant tissue culture contains four main components, inorganic components that include various macronutrients and micronutrients, organic components that include vitamins, amino acids and carbon source, gelling agent, and plant growth regulators. In addition, an optimum pH must also be maintained. A number of plant tissue culture media have been described. For rice tissue culture, we generally use more rashage and scoog medium. Now let us learn how to prepare MS medium. For preparing the medium on a regular basis, we usually use some pre-prepared stock solutions. These are nitrate stock, sulfate stock, halide stock, lead molybdenum stock, myoinositol stock, vitamin stock, and phaeta stock. Sterilization of the prepared medium along with other necessary items is done using an autoclave. This is an autoclave. 
It typically contains a sturdy vessel, a heating coil, a basket to place the items to be autoclaved, a lid, a radio locking system, a steam release valve, a pressure gauge, a safety valve, and a pedal for the lid operation. Before autoclaving, we must check that the heating coil is properly immersed in water. The items to be autoclaved are then placed in the basket. The lid is closed properly and the autoclave is switched on. After free steaming, the valve is closed, and autoclaving is done for 15 minutes under 15 pound pressure. The main component of the transfer room is the laminar airflow hood which provides a sterile environment for setting the culture. A laminar airflow hood consists of a cabinet that includes a stainless steel working area, HEPA filter, air pump, lighting system, and UV light for sterilization. Laminar airflow hood is sterilized under UV light. Rice seeds are first surface sterilized with 4% sodium hypochlorite and 2 drops of between 20. Finally, the cultures are maintained in a culture room. This room is equipped with an elaborate lighting system along with the temperature and humidity controlling system. For rice tissue culture, the culture room typically consists of a light room and a dark room both with controlled temperature and humidity.
For example, X plans for Kalu's induction are maintained in the dark room while Kali for shoot regeneration are maintained in the light room under 16 hours light and 8 hours dark cycle. A temperature around 32 degrees Celsius is maintained for rice. This is achieved when the excised embryos are incubated in a Kalu's induction medium for 10 days in the dark room. Callus is formed when incubation is continued for one month in the dark room. Callus is now placed in the regeneration medium and maintained in the light room. Multiple shoots start regenerating from the callus. Shoots are then transferred to the rooting medium for root initiation. The plantlets are now transferred to the nutrient solution followed by soil transfer for hardening. In the end, we believe that this virtual tour will motivate you all to build your career as a future plant biotechnologist.